9 methylox engines. 35 seconds. On an offshore platform, Tianlong 3 clears its biggest trial, about 1,100 tons of thrust and edges toward flight. After a fiery setback last year, the rocket now delivers a powerful full-scale test and nears launch. In this video, we unpack what the run actually proved, how Space Pioneer aims to land and reuse the booster, and why this could unlock affordable, frequent access to orbit for China. Space Pioneer's Tianlong-3 didn't just light engines. It executed a full-scale, first-stage trial intended to mirror flight-like loads without leaving the pad. On an offshore platform near Haiyang in China's Shandong province, the company ignited nine Methalox Tianhua 12 engines and held them for 35 seconds, generating about 1,102 tons, almost equals 1,000 tons, of thrust. Space Pioneer labeled this the rocket's major exam because it validates the integrated propulsion system. To bow machinery, manifolds, and engine-to-engine -engine interaction, under sustained power instead of a brief blip. Testing at sea isn't cosmetic. It reduces risk to inland facilities, eases acoustic and safety constraints at very high thrust levels, and gives engineers room to push duration and chamber pressures confidently. The hardware under test belongs to a launcher that measures 72 meters tall and targets 17, 18 tons to low Earth orbit. That payload class drives the nine-engine cluster choice and dictates the propellant mass, structural margins, and guidance slash control authority required during ascent. A 35-second hold is long enough to surface thermal and vibrational issues, check mixture ratio stability, and probe engine-out resilience logic, while keeping margin in case a rapid shutdown is needed. In other words, it's the bridge between component green lights and genuine first-stage readiness. Just as important is what this test follows. After a fiery setback last year, Tianlong-3 achieves a powerful full-scale test and nears launch. Space Pioneer previously traced that incident to a faulty connection between the rocket and its static fire mount, an error that turned a ground run into an unintended liftoff and crash. Moving to an offshore platform signals that lessons were absorbed, better containment, fewer unknowns at full thrust, and a safer path to long-duration burns. What comes next is a cascade of integrated checks. Expect a full wet dress rehearsal, avionics in the loop verifications, and stage-level acceptance runs that match or exceed ascent loads. Engineers will also finish validating recovery hardware, grid fins, landing legs, and thermal protection hotspots on the interstage. Because the program's economics depend on a booster that can return intact and be turned around quickly. The real story isn't a single static fire. It's what reliable reuse could unlock for China's low-Earth orbit broadband plants. Tianlong-3 is sized as a Falcon-class, partially reusable medium-lift vehicle, 17, 18 t to LEO, with a first stage designed to land and fly again. Space Pioneer has stated ambitions to fly 30-plus missions per year once in service. That cadence matters because China aims to deploy two massive internet constellations, Guang and Qianfan, each projected at 13,000-plus satellites. To date, neither project has reached even 1% of its target, and the principal bottleneck isn't satellite manufacturing, it's launch throughput. Here's how Tianlong-3 could bend the curve. First, batching. The company has indicated the rocket could carry up to 36 small internet satellites per launch, letting operators fill early shells faster and smooth the network's ramp up. Second, economies of reuse. Nine medium thrust methalox engines allow redundancy and potentially lighter refurbishment touch labor than swapping a few giant power plants. If the booster achieves double digit reuses with minimal part replacement, the cost per kilogram to orbit trends down. Third, predictability. A repeatable landing refurbishment tree flight loop lets satellite makers plan factory output against steady manifests, improving cash flow and insurance pricing for operators depending on launch dates. This is the same operational playbook that let Falcon 9 dominate Starlink deployment, a workhorse booster flying often, not occasionally. Tianlong 3's 35-second, 9-engine sea test is a direct rehearsal for that future. It demonstrated sustained thrust, 
thermal management, and manifold stability at power levels relevant to ascent, while giving the team experience with rapid, high-energy procedures in a controlled environment. The intent is obvious. Compress the path to first flight, then to first recovery, then to turnaround time that makes reuse economically meaningful rather than symbolic. Downstream effects extend beyond broadband. A domestic, private high-frequency launch option diversifies China's manifest alongside state vehicles, opens competitive pricing for commercial customers, and frees up heavier government rockets for missions where their lift is uniquely required. Tianlong-3 is sprinting in a crowded lane. Landspace, another private Chinese launcher company, is developing Zhuke-3, a stainless steel, methalox, reusable medium-lift rocket aimed at the same performance bracket. The company completed a booster static fire in June, and CEO Zhang Changwu told Phoenix TV that a debut flight could land between September and November 2025. Stainless steel adds dry mass but buys you robust thermal margins for re-entry and rapid iteration. An approach that mirrors early Starship lessons while targeting Falcon-class missions, not super heavy lift. Landspace's previous Methalox experience with Zhu Ke, too shortens the learning curve for engines, ground ops, and ignition transients, even as the shift to reusability introduces entirely new guidance, landing, and refurbishment hurdles. The company also weathered a Zhu Ke 2E failure on its third flight in July. While stated to be unrelated to Zhu Ke 3, it underscores how quickly test programs surface edge cases that must be engineered out before high cadence operations. On the state side, Long March 12A LM 12A is the flagship of a national push toward reusable first stages. In January, a development prototype reportedly executed a vertical takeoff slash landing test to 70 km altitude, though the outcome was never publicly detailed. By late 2025, LM 12A targets a first orbital attempt, with subsequent campaigns expected to focus on booster recovery and turnaround. The message is clear. Reusability is now a system-wide priority in China, not just a startup differentiator. Technically, these programs rhyme. Two-stage, medium-lift designs, first-stage reuse intended for 10 to 20 cycles, and methalox engines for high efficiency and clean refurbishment. Strategically, they diverge on materials, manufacturing, and test philosophy. Space Pioneer leans into an offshore, long-duration ground test path and a near-term debut framed as a final sprint, while land space appears to favor steel forward iteration and a tightly messaged first flight window. LM 12A brings state resources and infrastructure that can absorb risk across multiple prototypes without starving the rest of the manifest. For viewers tracking outcomes, three yardsticks will separate headlines from durable progress, flight and landing, clean ascent, stable stage separation, and a controlled first recovery attempt. Refurbishment speed, days, not months. Between flights, with minimal engine swaps, annual cadence, can any program approach 30 plus launches per year, the tempo needed to fill early Guang slash Qianfan shells? Placed in that context, Tianlong 3's milestone has extra weight because it directly precedes those yardsticks. A 9-engine sea test is more than a photo op. It's Tianlong 3 stepping into the arena where cadence, reuse, and logistics decide outcomes. If Space Pioneer turns this into a clean first flight, a controlled recovery, and a credible turnaround to Flight 2, China's commercial sector will gain a true Falcon-class analog. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.